Well, good afternoon, folks. This is Bill Costanzo, Livestock Guardian Dog Research Specialist at the AgriLife Center here in San Angelo. Um, today, we're starting our, uh, our next session in the uh, Livestock Guardian Dog Q&A sessions um, that we started back, I think, in March. So I've got a few questions for producers today. Um, hopefully, our video feed is, is working correctly this time and uh, oh, everybody's able to to log on and, and get the answers that they need. Um, if for some reason you miss uh, today's event, uh, we will post a, a video or a copy of this video onto our YouTube channel uh, later in the week. So our first question today um, was, should we separate our puppies while training or can they stay in the same stall together by the goats? <clears throat> so I guess first I'd say that wean puppies should be in full contact at all times um, all with their future charges. Um, so whatever livestock that you're, you're planning on them guarding, uh, they should be in contact with, um, you know, shortly after weaning. Um, the, the bonding period is really critical to the future success of the dogs. And so uh, livestock guardian dogs need to be bonded to livestock by about 14 weeks. Some people say 16 weeks, but I'd rather err on the side of caution and, and make sure it's done by 14 weeks. And, and that can't happen if they're, you know, separated from their livestock for part of the day or most of the day. Um, so that they really need to be in contact at all times. Now, as far as separating dogs, because, you know, you're concerned about you know, them being bonded as a pair and, and having issues later on um, all with excessive rough play or something like that. Um, it really depends on how strong the bond um, you want them to have with livestock or each other. Um, what we've seen in the dogs that have been in our bonding project is that single dogs tend to have a, a stronger bond with the livestock than pairs. However, um, the pairs have a tendency to approach a threat uh, more quickly than the single bonded dog. And so generally what happens is we release all the dogs from the pens into a, a small pasture here. And the single dogs um, tend to stay with the, the sheep and goats. Um, and then the pairs uh, run off to, to deal with it, with whatever they perceive as a, as a threat at that point in time. Um, it's normally just the other colleges, uh, cattle that are on the other side of the fence, but um, it still gives us a good idea of, of what the dogs might do later on in life. Uh, the next question that we had is, uh, you found, have I found anything about livestock guardian dog breeds that are safer or more, more tolerant of people and other dogs? Um, I guess I would say I haven't found any dogs that are necessarily safer around people than others. Um, I think if your dogs are well socialized um, as a puppy, uh, I don't think that you'll have any issues uh, later on uh, with different people handling your dogs. Uh, we spend about five minutes um, with direct socialization. That's, you know, checking the dog's paws, their nails, their teeth, their eyes, their ears, um, petting them, brushing them if they're long haired dogs. Uh, when the pups, you know, are in the bonding pens uh, three times a week, we spend that five minutes with that direct socialization. And that seems to be able to keep them, you know, well socialized as adults, um, as long as you continue to reinforce that socialization when they're out in the pasture. Um, as far as, you know, which breeds uh, have a tendency, you know, to be more tolerant or less tolerant of other dogs. Um, oh, Akbosh and, and Commodores tend to be, you know, more aggressive towards other dogs. Uh, that was also found true in some research that was done in the 1980s. I didn't get a chance today to, to look up that actual research um, I'll report, um, but if the, the producer that asked that question would like to see it, um, please email me and, and I can get you a copy of that when I have a little bit more time. Uh, you can also go on to our uh, website here at the center. Um, we have a whole literature section now on the guard dog page, and you can go through some of that literature on your own if you'd like to look for it. Um, as far as for working dogs, you know, if you acclimate your livestock guardian dogs ahead of time to other working dogs, especially once you, you take the dogs out of the bonding pens and they're, they're in a small trap or pasture for a few months, uh, that's the time to, to bring in your, you know, working dogs and herding dogs um, and introduce your livestock guardian dogs to them. Uh, that'll really help, um, you know, 
you not to have any issues when you go out and, and you need to move your livestock to a different location with your border collars, for instance. Um, you know, and, and the other thing, uh, you know, you really should be able to catch your livestock guardian dog out in the field. And so if you haven't socialized them enough, um, you know, you probably need to do that with your next set of, set of dogs. Um, Cause that way you can catch them in the field, tether them up or put them in the truck or a trailer and let your herding dogs do their work for you. Um, if you're looking for more information on breeds, uh, I'd recommend a book called Farm Dogs. It's from Story Publishing. Uh, it has uh, multiple different types of farm dogs, but it does have a, a large section on livestock guardian dogs, and uh, it's very helpful. It's got some, you know, uh, breed specific pictures and things like that that you can find out and some history about each one of the livestock guardian dog breeds. So the next uh, producer comment was um, they have a, a Pyrenees Anatolian mix that they rescued. Uh, it says she's definitely got livestock guardian dog instincts, but uh, in addition to barking at intruders, she chases squirrels, cars, bicycles, if they're not paying attention. Um, and I guess she's pretty quick at, at making this happen. Uh, they wanted to know, uh, is it common for livestock guardian dogs to have strong prey drive? Uh, I wouldn't, I would have thought that would be an undesirable trait in a livestock guardian dog, given their breeding to stick around and protect their herd and also not to chase their flock. Um, so yes, livestock guardian dogs have been bred for thousands of years to not have prey drive. Um, so I, I'm not sure how old this dog is. Um, you know, I would say if she's over 18 months or especially over 24 months, she's probably fully mature. And so if she's still got prey drive at that point, um, you might want to think about not using her as a livestock guardian dog. We do see some prey drive tendencies in a lot of the puppies um, at young ages. And it, and it doesn't really mean that they're going to have those same tendencies as adults. Um, most of it is adolescent behavior uh, that we see in the dogs, and it, it generally subsides by the time they're an adult. Uh, you know, going through the teenage months, um, a lot of times we see dogs that, you know, chase stock or chew on tails or chew on ears or bite back legs, you know, just a variety of different things. <clears throat> even carrying around, you know, newborn lambs and kids and keeping them away from their mothers because they think that they're protecting them. Um, those type of, uh, of actions, you know, in your dog, you need to correct those things during that time. Um, because if you don't, they will think that's okay to do and it, it will carry on into adulthood. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that livestock guardian dogs, you know, can just be thrown out there basically with livestock and, and they don't need any sort of training. And that's definitely not true. Uh, you know, a livestock guardian dog, like any dog that you need to perform a specific job, needs to have training and you need to follow up with them on a regular basis to make sure that they're uh, performing the job correctly that you want them to do. And if they aren't performing it correctly, then you need to change that behavior of them. Uh, so, like I said, generally most of that stuff kind of subsides by 18 to 24 months uh, with the dogs that we've seen here at the center. Uh, we do have another question that came in live here. Uh, why at two years old have my guardian dog started food aggression and what suggestions do you have? <clears> oh, <throat> uh, well, I guess my first question is, were they raised together or, or separately? Um, and I don't know if you can post that real quick, Diane. Um, but a lot of times, especially if they're, um, if they were raised separately and sometimes even if they're raised together, uh, one dog is generally going to be more aggressive than the other dog. Um, and that, that's just kind of how things work out. And so um, they're, they're maturing at that point. And um, okay, so those dogs were raised together. Um, so anyway, by, by, by two years of age, they, they've become mature. And um, oh, most likely that's the reason why it started now and, and didn't start earlier. Uh, because one dog is going to become the dominant dog uh, over the other two. I guess as far as suggestions, um, you know, if if you're on a smaller place and you can, um, you know, supervise them while you're feeding them, I don't know if you have a feeding station or you're hand feeding them. Um, you know, it's one of the nice things if you hand feed your livestock guardian dogs is you can definitely feed the dogs then in, in two separate areas fairly easily. Uh, I did have a producer that I spoke with a while back, had this same issue with, they had three dogs, I think. 
And um, oh, the only solution that we could work up was to to install a separate feeding station in a in a space about a hundred yards from where the first one was. Um, oh, she ended up placing it behind some bushes, and uh, oh, the more dominant dog wasn't able to see when one of the other two dogs got into the feeding station. So I guess that would be my, my first thing is if you can feed them separately, I, I would definitely recommend that. Um, you know, I know it's not possible for most producers, especially large producers to hand feed their dogs, but if you can hand feed them, it's really the best because you keep the dog socialized and uh, oh, you can do quick health checks and body condition scores and things like that on the dogs when they come up to eat. Uh, if you can't, again, I, I would try to add a second feeding station uh, somewhat of a distance away uh, so that the aggressive dog can't get there before the one that needs the food can get in. So hopefully that answers your question, Diane. Um, oh, if that doesn't work, I guess uh, after the Q&A session, um, get back with me or, or shoot me an email or a Facebook message and uh, we can try to come up with some other ideas. Um, I'm not sure if there's a you're very welcome, Diane. Um, I guess one quick thing I'll, I'll throw out there, and I have a post coming up tomorrow about this. Um, I, I do want to, you know, remind our followers and people that view our page and stuff that um, what we're doing here at the, at the center is research-based stuff. And, you know, sometimes the things that we do, you may or may not agree with. Um, but, you know, what we're trying to do is find a, a set of procedures for producers to use that's repeatable um, and that gives the, the correct outcome that they need for these dogs to be successful and to not roam and to you know stay on the property and things like that. And uh, oh, so when, when you make comments on our page, I, I hope that you remember those things, that everybody has a, a different method of training dogs. Um, Oh, just like there's lots of different kinds of breeds of dogs, there's lots of different kinds of methods on training those dogs. Well, we'll hold another uh, Q&A session in August. Um, this seems to be something that producers like. Um, so if you have any questions between now and then, feel free to, to email me here at the AgriLife Center or send me a Facebook message. Um, oh, our, our next event will be that uh, first week again in August. Um, I think we'll be back to Thursdays uh, on, uh, on that one. So with that, uh, if there's no more comments out there from anybody, um, I think we're going to wrap up this session today. I uh, hope everybody had a good fourth, and thank you for turning in. Uh, I do want to just real quick thank the Sheep and Goat Predator Management Board for making the funding for my position um, here at the AgriLife Center possible.